hello guys welcome back again to my youtube channel it's your girl abiola here and in today's video we're making this lovely jumpsuit from start to finish this video is going to be divided into two parts one which is the pattern drafting part and the second part is the sewing version of this video it's been a while i put out a video on this channel but guys i'm fully back i just had a bit of you know hindrances here and there but i'm fully 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 back so guys let's get straight into the video Video. for the upper part of those jumpsuits i drafted a pattern for the lower part i just cut directly on fabric i used a pattern for the upper part because it just makes everything easier and especially because this is a monostrap bustier and um, it's just going to make everything easier especially with the zipper allowance so guys without talking so much i'm going to go straight into the pattern drafting proper the first step I'm going to take is to fold my pattern paper into two. We are doing this because this is a monostrap bustier. You have to draft the two sides. We are not drafting just one side of the outfit, no. We are drafting both sides at once. The first step is to mark the neck width. The neck width that I'm working with is 3.5 inches and that's what I just marked. After which I'll mark the shoulder width. Her shoulder is 17 which is divided by 2 is 8.5 and that's what I marked. Then our shoulder is not straight so I'll come down by 1 inch and join that 1 inch point to the 3.5 inch neckline. Guys, if you remember our shoulder is not straight. The next step guys is to calculate the armhole line or the bust line and that is calculated by dividing the bust by 6 plus 1.5 inches her bust is 39 divided by 6 plus 1.5 inches will give you 8 inches i'll go ahead now and mark 8 inches from that 1 inch slope what i marked now is 8 inches this ruler is i don't know why it's reflecting but i marked 8 inches but from the other end i'll mark 9 inches so that i can get my straight line I hope this is self-explanatory. Because of the one inch loop, we mark eight inch at the other end, but we mark nine inch from the neckline. And I would label that upper chest line because it can be called upper chest line as well, or bust line or armhole line. But for the purpose of this video, we will use upper chest line. The next thing we're going to mark, guys, is the bust point, okay? Also known as BP, the bust point. Her bust point is 10.5 inches i'll go ahead now and mark that 10.5 inch mark it in two places so i can get a straight line marking in two places just aid you getting a straight line on your pattern paper okay after that i'll go ahead and mark the under bust which is 14.5 shoulder to under bust is 14.5 and that is exactly what i just marked as usual i'll mark in two places so it's easier for me to connect the next thing i'm going to mark is the waistline or shoulder to waist i'm working with 16.5 inches and i took half inch allowance so i marked 16.5 and 17 inches that's 17 implies the half inch allowance that i added i'm going to go ahead and rule this line right now yeah this is the bust point like i said earlier i'm going to label that b then the next side which is the under bust i'm going to rule that and i'm going to label that ub then the waistline i'm going to rule that and label that w okay then i'm going to rule the allowance part which is half inch allowance that i added i'm going to label that a to signify the allowance okay yep now let's move on to the next step i'm trying to do this step by step so that everybody understands this because this is very very easy it's just very very easy the next step is to go ahead and form our armhole curve i'll go ahead and really straight line you know just to form the armhole curve if you can remember our armhole is eight inches divided by two is four and that's what i marked four inch and i'll go in by half an inch from that four inch point okay then i'm going to form the armhole curve at this point but before i do that I'm just showing you the steps I went through again. I just want everybody to get this part. Like I said, divided the armhole by two and I got four. And I went in by half an inch, 
can you see that yeah so now i'm going to take her bust divided by four and mark it her bust is 39 39 divided by four is 9.75 and that's what i marked it's going to help us get our armhole curve correctly first off i'm going to connect from that shoulder line to that half inch that we went in can you see and i'll go ahead and form the curve and connect to the her bust like that upper chest line area okay and now uh um, whole curve is formed okay now let's go to the next step which is creating the process that bust here in case you didn't measure your client's nipple to nipple which is the bust pan here is how to calculate for different bust size you divide your client's bust by 4 minus 1.5 inch okay my client's bust is 39 divided by 4 minus 1.5 inch gives me 8.25 i'll divide that 8.25 by 2 to get 4.125 on the bust point line, I will go ahead and mark 4.125 plus 0.5, which was approximately 4.6. On the under bust, I will mark 4.125, same as the waistline. Okay? Now, guys, on the bust point, like I told you guys, the bust span that we got is 4.125 plus 0.5 inches allowance. I will go ahead and mark 4.6. I'm going to show you guys now on the ruler after marking it what I marked. I went ahead to mark 4.6 inches after adding 0.5 inch allowance. Then on the under bust, I'll mark the 4.1 that I got. Then on the waistline and the allowance line, I'll just mark 4.1 and I'll connect that into a straight line. As you can see, I connected from the waist to the under bust and from the under bust to the bust point. Can you guys see that? We are about to create a princess that okay the next step is called under bust contouring and for that intake for bust size of 30 to 35.5 we'll take in 1.5 inches 36 to 42.5 we'll take in 2 inches and for 43 and above we're going to take in 2.5 inches my client's bust size is 39 which falls in between that intake of 2 inches so i'll go ahead and mark out two inches on the allowance line and on the under bust line we're actually doing what is called under bust contouring okay so i'll go ahead now and mark two inches on that on the allowance area and on the under bust area okay after which i'll go ahead and measure my armhole round to get what i have and divide it by two so as you can see me i'm measuring my armhole and what i got is nine inches so divided by two is 4.5 inches and that is what i'm marking as you can see on the screen then i would use my curved rule to connect from that point to the bust point can you see guys can you see mm -hmm. so as i've done that the next step is to connect the line on the under bust and the allowance i'm just confirming that i marked out two inches and i'll rule that down guys this is very 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 easy i just want to tell you guys that it's very very easy just follow the steps the next thing i'm going to do now is to come down by one inch from the bust point to enable me create the curve okay that's the um under bust curve i came down by one inch and i went to my curved ruler and i connected that to form a curve i didn't want it to be too curvy at the same time i don't want it to be straight after that i went ahead with my marker to you know make those straight edges curvy okay so now that we are done with that the next step is to come out by 0.75 inch on each side of that line okay we're taking in a dart so 0.75 inches there and 0.75 inches on the other end can you guys see then i'll go ahead to join that after going up by one inch from the bust point before connecting i'm going up by one inch from the bust point as you just see me doing and i'll connect that i decided to go in with a slight curve it should be like a straight line can you see and a slight curve at the other end it, it just looks better okay just take a look at how i'm connecting there's really no manual to connecting this thing just you know use your discretion or just join it the way you see me doing yeah and that is it basically just make sure you get a nice um look the curve is not too curvy but at the same time it's not too straight that's what i was going for okay yeah and here is what we have after which i went ahead to add the 1.5 inch allowance i took 
at that point remember i'll took 0.75 on each side of the line which is equal to 1.5 i'll go ahead and add that 1.5 inch at this point 1.5 inch as well we do this because when we are done joining our princess that bustier the other edge is going to be shorter so to avoid it from being shorter we have to add this 1.5 inches so that it matches I, I hope you guys are understanding this normally when you're done joining your princess that bustier you realize that this other edge is shorter after joining so that is why we went ahead to add that 1.5 inch so by the time we join the two sides okay it's going to align i hope this is um self-explanatory okay so if you've seen so many persons adding allowance at that point it's just to ensure that when you join it aligns if not one edge will be shorter which is not really good so guys at this point i'll go ahead now and you know put the um, um body measurement i'll input the body measurement okay so after that i went ahead at two inch allowance at that point inch allowance okay i went ahead to input her under bust measurement her under bust said 3.5 divided by 4 which is 8.375 i just marked 8.4 then the dart that we took in there if you remember it's two i added the two inches like that then i added two inch allowance extra and for the waist her waist is also 33.5 which implies that if i divide that by four i would get 8.375 i just marked 8.4 as well then the dart that we took in there is two inches i marked the same thing and i added two inch allowance as well same thing that i did before so i went ahead to connect the points okay i went ahead to connect the point and yes guys we are gradually coming to the end but we just have a few things to tackle this is very easy i just want your mind to be at the fact that this is very easy and i can do it the next step is to go ahead and open the paper if you remember we're trying to draft the two parts and because this is a mono strap i just went ahead i opened the paper and i drafted the same thing i drafted on this side on the other side i just extended the line and i did the same thing i did this time around using that middle crease as the center front i i hope you understand that so we're going to go ahead and mark the same things we marked before 3.5 inch neckline 8.5 inch shoulder line by using the middle crease as our center line everything the same um um you know um armhole line that we did everything we're just going to do the same thing exactly how we did it mark the same dot okay <laughs> the cf i wrote in between um signifies center front okay so i'm just going to go ahead and forward this just go back play what we did earlier the two inches that we took the one inch we came down from the bus point the same thing we did earlier just go ahead and do the same thing on the other end this is just to make it very very easy because this is a mono strap if this wasn't going to be a mono strap there was no need for us to draft it this way okay so exactly the same thing we did earlier okay after that the next step is to create our mono strap this is at your own discretion you can use any measurement for yours but i'm going to show you what i would use now from that point from that 3.5 inch point i went in by one inch which implies that our neckline is now 4.5 inches i just went in from that 3.5 inch point by one inch then i came down by six inches at the midpoint that's why i said it's at your discretion you could go down more you could go up more then at that um ample line i went up by two inches can you guys see do that at your own discretion i did two inches so that the boobs is not out so that the boobs is not showing then i went ahead to connect from that one inch point to the six inch point and finally to the two inch point okay i'm going to go ahead and explain something right now so you know that this is not a standard at this point that i went in by one inch you can go in by 1.5 two inches depending on what you're going for at this point i went in by six inches you can come down by seven eight as well you can go higher okay depending on what you want to show if you want a bit of cleavage you could go down but this was just perfect for my client i didn't want um, too much busts out there okay so you could go up by two and a half you could go up by three you could even come down more depending on what you want okay 
The next step is to measure the allowance that I have at that point, like we did for the other end. You know that if we do not measure this allowance after joining, you realize that they do not match. Well, like one area is shorter than one, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and measure what I have at that point, and I'm going to add that to the other edge, to the um, armhole line, like we did before. And I got one inch, and I went ahead to add that one inch at that point. At the same time, I'll add the one inch at the upper chest line area, then connect them. As you can already tell, I'm just adding the one inch at the upper chest line area and I'll connect like I said already, okay? So, um, yeah, here is what I have, here is what I have, here is what I have. I'm just trying to make sure that curve is, you know, curving properly, you know, because it's looking so straight. So I tried to use my marker to, you know, make it a bit curvy. Okay, so I labeled one, two, three. It is important to label your pattern so that you don't mix them up. The next step is to go ahead and input the measurements like we did before. The measurements divided by four, the boss divided by four, under boss, the waist, and connect like before, then label the front pattern. I went ahead to cut that out, and now let's work on the back pattern. I'm going to go ahead and fold like I did for the front, and I'm going to go ahead and mark the zipper allowance first, which is two inches. So I'll go ahead now and mark two inches from the beginning of the pattern to the end of the pattern. Okay? When I'm done with that, I will go ahead and, you know, work on the neckline, 3.5 inches. It has to match with the front, 3.5 inches. The shoulder width, 8.5, no, plus 17 divided by 2, which is 8.5, okay? And as you remember, our shoulder is not straight, so we're going to still come down by 1 inch. Same thing with it in front. I'll connect from that point to the 3.5 inch. After which, I'll mark the armhole. The armhole, if you remember, is 8 inches. We already calculated that. So 8 inches, I'll go ahead and form the straight line. Okay? Yep. So 8 inches, guys. For the armhole and if you remember you mark nine at the other edge so that you can get your straight line that is if the armhole is eight inches after ruling out the armhole line i'll go ahead and you know mark out other horizontal measurements i'll label this upper chest line i'll go ahead to mark the bust point i'll go ahead to mark the under bust i'll go ahead to mark the waist and the allowance line like I did in front. Same thing that I did. The bust point is 10.5 which I just marked. Okay. After that, I'll go ahead and mark the under bust which is 14.5 inches. The waist which is 16.5 and allowance which is um, half inch and that's 17. Okay. So I'll go ahead and roll that into a straight line and label each of them. We are gradually getting to the end, so don't be tired. I went ahead to label the zip allowance as well. And if you remember what we did in front, on the bust point, we marked the nipple to nipple plus 0.5 inch allowance. And mine, if you remember, was 4.6 inches. So I marked 4.6 and I marked 4 on the on 4.1 on the under bust and 4.1 on the allowance line. I'll connect all that into a straight line. Okay? Guys, I don't know how my camera stopped filming, but I explained this twice. I'll explain it here and I'll explain it again because I still had to draw it on the other side. So, you're going to get this, so don't worry. I don't know why my camera just stopped filming and I, it was until I was done that I realized at that point that it wasn't filming. The first step is to mark out that 4.5 inch that will mark in front, as you can see 4.5, but I don't like how... I wouldn't be using this 4.5 inches, instead I will go up by 1.5 inches because I feel like it looks better when you go up like that. I mean the princess that looks better when you go up. So I'll go higher by um, 1.5 inches, okay? And that is going to be better for us. So I took my curved row and I connected from that point to the other straight line, from this point to the other straight line. After which, you know, for it to align when we sew it, I added one inch at that point because if we don't add that one inch, it's not going to align when we sew it together. One area is going to be shorter than the other. And to avoid that, I added the one inch, then connected from that point like this 
to the armhole. I hope this is very understandable but if it isn't I still have a point on this video where I explained it even because I had to redraft that part okay so I'll go ahead and input all the measurements I added two inches allowance like I did before okay added two inches allowance um, then on the boss divided by five remember it's 8.375 max that added two inches allowance the waist is also 3.5 divided by four 8.375 then i marked all of them and connected that as well so we're done with the back pattern i'll go ahead now and fold in my zip allowance just watch what i'm doing closely fold in your zipper allowance because you need to trace out your mono strap and you want it to align so this step is very very important and critical in creating your mono strap bust here okay so i'll place the front pattern on the back pattern but guys watch this i was already even making a mistake it's supposed to be wrong sides facing each other the same way your outfit is supposed to be that is how you're going to do it so i'm going to go ahead now and flip my back pattern i'm going to label the wrong side so you see how it's going to be done okay so i went ahead to label the wrong side as you can see so i'm going to place wrong sides facing each other and the shoulders i would align it can you see me aligning the shoulders make sure the shoulders are aligned i'll go with my scissors and trim out the mono strap that i did on the front pattern this is going to ensure that everything aligns properly okay this is how your should look when you are done trimming especially the zipper allowance part that is why you fold it that way now see how our zipper allowance is can you see like it just aligns if, if if you are done attaching your zipper it's going to align properly now let's get rid of the zipper bulge i'm going to go in from that point by half an inch and i'll connect that to the upper part this is going to get rid of the zip bulge that we see there so uh, it's going to avoid all of that sometimes you may realize that when you are done joining the front and your back the back is longer than the front so we're going to get rid of half the allowance we added at the back the half inch allowance we're going to get rid of that half inch allowance to help with the zipper bulge as well as ensure that when we join the front to the back it aligns this is common with princess that bustiers so i'm going to go ahead now and cut out the half inch allowance that we added at the back this will ensure that the back and the front bustier when you join the two of them is going to align properly as well as help with the zipper bulge so here are the things i'm cutting out the things i'm cutting out are the things i marked in um red okay so i'll go ahead now and trace all of this out so you see how it is just watch closely because as this last thing i'm going to do okay so guys as you can see i'm tracing now the half inch i told you guys yeah tracing this out to ensure that there's no zip bulge also it to ensure that the front bust the front and the back bustiers aligned okay so the next step now is to you know cut out my pattern but 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 guys there is a but and this but is the fact that i cannot cut this out until i have traced back what i need to trace at this point so i'll go ahead and form back the armhole then i'll come down by one inch you know the shoulder slope and connect from that point to form the shoulder slope okay then after doing that i'll take half of the armhole when i'm done connecting i'll take half of the armhole which is four inches and i'll mark it if you remember our back armhole you don't connect you don't go in by half an inch i would use my ruler to connect it like this can you see this is actually because i was going to explain this part so i'm going to go ahead now and mark out that 4.5 inches as we marked in front after marking the 4.5 inches then i'll go up by 1.5 inches because i prefer how that looks as the princess that but yeah i'll go ahead to connect that with my um curved ruler after which i'll go in with my ruler you know add the one inch extra that will help it align after we are done joining so i'll go with my um curved rule and now connect to that point everything aligns i already told you guys that i was going to re-explain this part and i did okay so now we can now cut 
safely and know that okay we are on the right track so i went ahead to cut it just watch closely how i cut out mine so that you don't make any mistakes when you're cutting out yours okay so guys here is how the back should be arranged okay when i'm done cutting it i'll still label it and i'll go ahead now and cut out the front part guys i already cut out this front part <laughs> but it wasn't filming i had to tellotape it back and i tried to cut it on camera so that you guys get how it should be cut properly okay so guys after doing all of this this is how it should be this is how the front pattern should be labeled one two three and now i'm going to show you how the back pattern should be and i'm going to label that four five six seven can you see how it's supposed to be okay so now i've gone to cut on the fabric i've gone ahead to cut that on the fabric i added half inch allowance on the shoulder line after cutting it out and as you can see yeah that's a little bit of added allowance every other place already had their allowance okay same thing for the back i added allowance at the shoulder line then i added half an inch at the zipper part the half an inch is what i'm going to use to turn it with the line so that the allowance is not lost and maybe the clothes will not align again so i added half an inch allowance to the zipper side so that when i turn it with the lining it's my zipper allowance is still there like my zipper allowance is still going to be complete yeah so that's basically it okay that's basically it at this point that is basically it <laughs> so now let's go to the trouser parts okay so guys over to the trouser parts here is how to fold your fabric for your trouser so you don't waste your fabric you're going to divide your hips by four plus one inch allowance the hip i'm working with is 45 divided by four plus one is 12.25 then i added that 12.25 to the hips divided by 16. 12.25 plus the hips divided by 16 gave me approximately 15. so i folded my fabric by 15 so what is folded here is 15. now let's get to the drafting proper the first step is to mark out my half inch allowance and this allowance is what i'll be using to join the trouser part to the upper bodice or the monostrap bustier anything you want to call it so i'm going to go ahead and mark out that half an inch okay after which i'll go ahead and mark out the hip point the hip point i'm working with is 10 inches okay so i'll go ahead and mark out the hip point of 10 inches after which i'll go ahead and connect that with my meter row okay after which i'll go ahead and mark the crotch line the crotch line i'm working with is 11 inches so i'll go ahead and mark that and yeah and i'll connect that with my meter row as well then the next thing i'm going to mark is the knee line and that is 20.5 inches so i'll go ahead now and measure 20.5 inches that's what i just marked and as i say always i'll go ahead and connect that with my meter rule to form a straight line because my camera cannot get to the to the um end of the trouser we're going to drop that part later i'm going to focus on the upper part for now so i'm going to divide the hip by four plus one inch her hip is 45 divided by four is 11.25 plus one inch is 12.25 so i marked 12.25 at the crotch line and at the waistline i'll go ahead and connect those two points with a meter row to form a straight line then the waist divided by four that's 33.5 divided by four is 8.375 plus one inch allowance and plus one inch for that can you see i added two inches now go ahead and connect that with my curved row from the waist to the crotch line yeah next step is to improve the crotch extension and you get your crotch extension by dividing your hip by 16. 45 divided by 16 is about 2.8 so i'm going to go ahead and input 2.8 at that point then to get my crotch curve i'll come out by one inch so that the curve is not too deep i'll go ahead and connect that as you see me doing okay so that the curve is not too deep that's why i came out by one inch and now we already have our crotch curve okay the next step is to measure what i have at the crotch line okay if you did the calculation i told you to do at the beginning you don't really have to do this 
I just know that the uh, measurement at the crotch area is 15 inches. That's why I said with this method, you're not going to waste any fabric. So you're going to measure what you have at that crotch line, including the crotch extension. And you're going to divide that by two. For me, I have 15 inches. After dividing by two, I have 7.5. I'll input 7.5 at that point. I'm going to try, I'm trying to divide my trouser into two parts to aid the even distribution of the of the um what do i call it now of the trouser uh, measurement so i divided that from beginning to the end 7.5 from beginning to the end okay so once you are done doing that it's now time to input the measurements the way you want it but first of all input the length that i didn't input because um um my camera could not get that at that point the length i'm working with is 47 inches which i'll go ahead to mark okay after marking that the remaining two inches is going to serve as the allowance that i'll be using for my um jumpsuit okay so after rolling that i just left the remaining two inches um downwards as the allowance i was going to use for this jumpsuit so now let's go up and input measurement i decided to put um 28 inches for the knee line and 28 divided by 2 is 14 so i'm going to divide 14 by 2 and put 7 inches on each side of the line 7 inch here 7 inch there does that make any sense and now i'm connecting i'll shift the camera up now so you see how i connected okay then at the other end i'll go ahead and connect as well using the straighter part of my curved ruler and i'll go to the end of the trouser and also input the measurement i want there and the measurement i'm going to be inputting is 6.5 on each side which implies that i used 26 inches at that point 26 divided by 2 is 13 so i'll input 6.5 inch at this point and 6.5 inch at the other point i'm going to use my meter rule now so that you guys can see what i inputted exactly 6.5 inch here 6.5 inches there you can use whatever you want this is what my client wants that is why i use this measurement i'll go ahead now and connect that with a meter rule okay yeah and yeah our trouser is getting ready we're almost done if you've gotten to this point and you haven't subscribed subscribe now i'm cutting out my trouser okay just watch closely and see how i cut out mine the allowance should be left alone do not mistakenly cut off your allowance now let's cut the back part of the trouser the first thing i'm going to do is to go in at that point by two inches after which our back is not straight that's why we're going in okay then by the side i'll come out and bring out back that two inches i took in the middle and to make space for the bum i'll go up by 1.5 inches this person has a big bum bum that's why i came up by 1.5 i usually use one 1.5 two then i'll connect from that 1.5 inches okay to the two inches at that side so from the 1.5 inch up here to the two inches by the side yeah then by the on the crotch line i'm going to come out by two inches as well as you can see me marking i marked two inches okay after marking the two inches on the knee line i'm going to mark one inch so i'll go ahead now and connect all those points using either my curved driller or material as the case may be okay so I'll go ahead and connect all those points yeah so after that it's time to input the crotch extension for the back which is to make space for the bum as well so on the crotch line i'll come out by two inches this is going to accommodate our bum bum so i'll come out by two inches on the crotch line and i'm going to mark that so for me to get an accurate crotch i'm going to um, extend that straight line that i have there okay then i'm going to create the back crotch i'm going to lift the front part and create this back crotch just watch closely what i did i just did the same it's just like you're drawing a straight line and you cover it just to get your back crotch it's not a big deal you can do it then it's time to input my zipper allowance now i'm going to use a zipper allowance of 1.5 inches okay 1.5 inches so that it matches with the deeper allowance of the monostrap bustier do you get because when you are 
going to hold this part you're going to be holding two inches not as just not just this 1.5 inches which will match with the zipper allowance of the upper part i'm going to work with a length of nine inches i initially wanted to use 10 but i changed my mind so I used 9 inches as the length of my zipper allowance. I think 10 is most preferable, okay? Use 10 inches. Now, I am going to connect from the crotch line to the knee line like this. Straight up like this. It's very, very easy. Then, I'm going to go down and take 1 inch at the end of that point, of the other point. Take one inch and I'll use my long gorilla to connect together, connect them together. Then I'm going to cut that out. Our trouser is ready. Ready, ready, ready. <laughs> so um, when I cut this out, I'll go to my lining piece and also cut that out. That is not really important on the camera. You just go ahead and trace out your front part on your lining, trace out your back part on the lining as well. Be very careful at this point, okay? So um here I am tracing everything out on my lining. Guys, the next part of this video is where I joined everything to form this beautiful jumpsuit that you're seeing right now. So if you want to see how I joined everything to achieve this and cut the sleeves as well, you need to watch the second part. So do well to subscribe, hit the post notification icon so that when I post a new video, you'll be the first to receive it and you can be able to have access to my other contents that are coming your way because I said I'm back, like I'm fully back. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!